Apurva Mehta, welcome to CNN News 18. Thank you so much, Vishal. Apurva, you are the CEO of Dharma Productions. Mm -hmm. To begin with, you said a very interesting thing in the past. You said on the film side, the only the one asset that we had uh, that other production houses did not have was the directors. Mm. So you figured out quite early and did an output deal with the studios, which is resulting in this free flow of this diverse content in the form of films like Sher Shah, Gheraiya. Or the anthology Ajib Dastan. In the March last year, your company introduced 14 new directors. Mm. I to say that idea, or I should, shall I say, the visionary idea is working. Absolutely. So I think you know, Karan, Karan being a director himself understands the importance of the captain of the ship. You know, uh, you know, you may have the best actors working on your film. You may have, uh, you may have the best production design, and you may spend the maximum amount of money. But the realities of the director. Is somebody who is not uh, a strong personality to to helm the whole ship. It's never going to do well, you know. You know, and a film is directed well, even if it doesn't have the strongest actors, it will still find appreciation. But if a film is not directed well, nothing will work, you know. So I think in that sense, we've uh, he's always realized that, and fortunately, because he's also a filmmaker, he constantly along his way meets assistants who he sees sparks in, and that's how we launched many of them. Be Tarun Mansukani did those Sana for us. Or be Nikhil, or be it, uh, you know, uh, Abhishek Varman, who did two states for us, was an assistant, or Ayan Mukherjee, who was his assistant at Wake Up Sit. So I think a lot of them have come on board like this. And some of them basically are referrals from other directors who want to come in. And if you like the script, we work with them. Like Ashashank Tehtan was not somebody we had launched, but he came up, came to us with a wonderful script, and uh, the rest is history in that sense. So, yes, for us, that is the biggest brand equity, uh, you know, to continue making many films over the years. So, you know, you're almost a week away from the release of Shakun Batra's Gheraiya. Yes. Last film, Kapoor and Sons made close to 75 crores at the box office. Mm. How's the mood and excitement like? Uh, because now the film is going to be premiered on an OTT platform. Don't you think a film like this deserves a theatrical run? Both in terms of audience response and financially. So, you know, uh, Vishal, the thing is that I, we love the film. I have to say it's an extraordinary film and a film like this really hasn't been made in Hindi cinema. And I know everyone says that, everyone always says that, but I mean, in all honesty, it is, it's where you, you've not seen something like this before, you know, it's extremely modern in the sense of its storytelling. It's about human relationships, their fragility. So we had intended to make this film for the theatrical release, but having said that, you know, we were very clear that it has to release in this in the next in the first two months of this calendar year because you know we also have a tie up with Viacom Studios and there are certain calculations that all of us have done to ensure which had to be matched in a sense you know so uh, for us it was important to release the film in these months and again once again we're in a situation where there is a little bit of a, a, little, a large amount of fear among people because of the pandemic spreading quite substantially in December and January and you have lots of states still not having working with the high occupancies so. It kind of made sense to us that, listen, why are we doing this? Why are we putting out a film? Because we want to put it out in a situation that's not looking very, very conducive in terms of making sure that we get the maximum eyeballs. And essentially, secondly, also, we, you know, the content is, is if you see the film, you'll understand the content is a bit, uh, how do I say it? It's a little bit mature. Uh, hmm? mature. It's mature content. It requires a certain amount of, uh, you know, because it's about human relationships, you know, and complexities and all of that. So. I think for us also, this platform itself was very, very correct because all the target audience who enjoy content this are on this platform. You know, as a filmmaker, you look for two things, Vishal. You look for visibility for a product. You Three things, actually. Visibility for a product. You look for market for a good marketability of the product so people are aware. And you look for financial gain. You know, I mean, eventually, these are the three parameters for me. And, I, I you know, for me, releasing on Amazon Prime ticked all the three boxes. So, I mean, we're very happy in that sense. You know, we've... You know, we know that we would theatrically never be able to release this film in 240 countries worldwide on the same day. It's not going to happen. So how much will it affect uh, the profits uh, if it was released theatrically? Like going. I think we're in a great position, you know, because we've got top pricing from all the platform, from our satellite and distributor partners. And we're in a, we're all very, very happy. Let me put it that way. We're in a very, very happy space. Okay, you are in profits. That's a good thing. But you know, very good, very happy space, not profit. <laughs> nice. You know, Apurva, you said while working on Adil Mushkil was a big learning experience for you as a producer. You learned the tricks of the trade and became quite a hands-on uh, producer. Mm. Now, what is the most difficult thing 
or the challenge for a producer today uh, ego management that's easy to answer ego management i said our business is 80% handling people and 20% actually working i said it's about you you're dealing with so many creative people you know, be it technicians be it actors be it uh, heads of departments crew you know they all creative people everyone comes to the point of view producing partners you know so everyone has a point of view everyone has a thought about how things should be done i think it's about it's about uh, you know kind of uh, managing ego managing everybody's thoughts expectations and making sure you still achieve what you need to achieve you know i think that for, that is the biggest challenge in the business so talking about managing egos you know everyone knows dharma production really pampers their talent so mm. what is the craziest demand you have come across or entertained by a film star so you know i have to say that because of because there's tremendous respect for karan and his achievements and his and his creativity you know we've not had any of those kind of situations of some outrageous demands from any actor but it just is i think just creative differences creative opinions you know those can get difficult you know at times because and like i said it's only about the actors it's about technicians also everyone wants to work a with a particular person we don't want to work with that person or i want to do something in a particular manner somebody else wants to do in some other manner so i think it's handling all of those things you know because you have 80 90 people working together on every film there's bound to be differences of opinion it's only natural you know and to kind of manage that and ensure that you know things are running smoothly till the whole film is made uh is 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 important i'm saying maybe you must have signed some check where say you know okay this also like maybe like you know hollywood they say my dog need to travel and the private jet was sent <laughs> oh, no. i mean i have we've not had anything so far to be very very honest and hand on my heart i mean it's not we've not had anything so crazy so far we have not uh, yeah but i mean i'm sure that they will come very soon <laughs> <laughs> you know you of course left your job in london and came to mumbai uh, when your friend karan jor asked you and requested you to manage his production house uh, what prompted your decision and how was it like managing a, a production house of 15 people in the pre studio era so i have to say that i had i mean i'm very thankful to yashraj who i worked early on the distribution setup in the uk with i learned a lot you know that was my first exposure to this business Although I was only doing distribution, and I think when Karan asked me to come back, we've been friends in the sixth grade. So for me, it was uh, there was no thinking really. It was just uh, it just happened. He asked me, and I came, back and I said, yeah, of course. You know, it was just I think the bond was very strong. We are the oldest friends, Touchwood, and uh, uh, you know, so there was no deep thought that went into it. It was just like my friends called me, I'll go back. You know, so and I'm grateful to my wife for supporting me also. Uh, you know, because I think at that point she was settled there, and we are now. So she had kind of, and both of us had kind of said, okay, this is our life now. We live in a suburban house abroad, and we work here, like how typically all Indians do. So I think the change was easier for me than her. But uh, yeah, it was. It was not a. I mean, it was a decision that we were happy to take. You do test screenings. You do a focus reading of your scripts. So that Correct. means you had a fair idea what the box office would look like when the film opens. Correct. So what is the strategy to market a bad film or the film that you know won't survive its first week? <laughs> so we are still learning that i mean we've uh, we've uh, we've not thankfully we've not had uh, we've not we've always felt the film is great and then it doesn't perform well we've not we've not gone through that phase of making a film as oh my god what is this film and how are we going to put it out there you know you 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 start with the intention of making a great film and you know somewhere on the line you always hope that it happens that way and you know there are times you're right when it can happen where the creative or the film maker is slightly different from what the paper from what you read on the paper and something goes horribly wrong you know but i think we are very committed uh, you know we will ensure that we put it out correctly and to the best way we can because eventually you know it's a decision of the audiences but we won't leave any st- stones unturned to promote it correctly i mean we are very careful about that you know, because every director has given his blood and hard work you know it may not turn out the way we all wanted to but i mean there is no denying that the actors the director the technicians all work hard on that film so you have to kind of work You have to you have to do what you have to do, and then you have to just pray to God that everything works out correctly. Apurva, your company currently have an arm which is dedicated to the content for the digital medium. The fiction hmm. division is of course headed by Soman Mishra. Correct. There is, uh, there is Dharma 2.0, which is into ad films, and Correct. then there is a talent management company as well. Hmm. In which direction do you see your company going from here? Is launching hmm. a music label or going Hollywood will be the next step? Uh, we'll see uh, Dharma taking. So you know, I don't think we'll be doing. Uh, we will be doing. Uh, I mean, I don't know what, about the Hollywood bit. I don't think that will happen right now because we're very happy making films in for the Hindi language and maybe regional cinema, if at all. You know, because this is our core strength and our expertise, and we like to continue doing that. Uh, 
uh, I don't, I don't think we would be doing anything more at this point in time. I think the for the next four five years, at least the vision is to kind of make more content both for theatrical and also for the OTT platforms. Build our talent agency so we can kind of launch more stars, groom them, and of course build a larger ecosystem of talent along the way. And Dharma 2.0, like I said, is involved heavily to production of uh, commercials and videos, and uh, and probably doing more of that too. But there's no, there, as of now, there's no immediate plan. I mean, the idea is to do more volume under each vertical, yeah. you know, but there is no plan that will change to increase any more verticals. I mean, the most immediate thought would be distribution, but I don't think we want to do that right now because, you know, I worked in a distribution house in the UK. I know what, what's involved. I have that question for that later, but you know, yeah. uh, those who are watching this interview, would you like to tell us how they can approach and submit their story or script to Dharma Productions and how it will be taken forward? So, you know, we have a creative team there and like you rightly said, we're under Somain Mishra who heads the fiction bit and we have somebody called Anisha Beg. This is only for shows on the non-fiction bit. You know, Somain Mishra heads the digital the digital bit for films and fiction and also the, the films for theatrical. So we have, a, we have an email, I think there is an email ID where you can kind of connect with the team and then the team comes back to you if they find your synopsis or your story idea interesting and then it kind of follows various loops. Uh, it goes, the, the creative team likes to like it and then it goes through two, three levels and then it goes to current and then it kind of gets a final yes or no. You know, so there is a process it has to go through because it's not physically possible for them to read every script. You know, or for one person to read all the scripts that come in. You know? So there is a team that kind of works together, discusses, debates, deliberates and then moves ahead. Anybody can submit. Yeah, then, I mean, that's not a problem at all. But I mean, we don't allow people to give us story ideas or something because, you know, we don't, I mean, if you are submitting a full ready script, which is registered or something, that's something we're more comfortable with because, you know, to develop a story idea, we then rather make our own story ideas and why should we work with anybody else, you know? So that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> you know, Purva, you are someone who understands the business of cinema and film distribution system very well. Hmm. Uh, do you think uh, our movies are ready now for a worldwide release, like a day and date release where, uh, you know, it, they're subtitled and released in dub version across the world? Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful question. Uh, it's very difficult. You know, I mean, I think we are just, uh, I think uh, it's, you know, Hindi films are a very unique beast. You know, we are, uh, you know, we are not, we are not planned as well as the Hollywood films, you know, because I mean, the challenge also is our actors are doing so much content as compared to what in Hollywood you have so much, you have such a larger talent pool of, of actors. You know, here you have only the handful of those 20, 25 actors who are really controlling the entire business in terms of films, you know, so they're jumping from one film to the other and if something goes wrong, one project, the next one gets delayed and so there's the one after that, you know, so you're not able to get focused time continuously from a whole team for that particular project. So invariably, and then you're always rushing to a release date because something is not finished and you want to miss that release date that you blocked, you know. So invariably then you are battling so many things that you're not able to do a lot of the things that you rightly mentioned that Hollywood does very smartly, you know, which is dubbing them, subtitling them in many languages, creating visibility for them everywhere, you know, and which allows at least some amount of additional income to come in through viewing of that film in the dubbed or subtitled language. So I think it's about planning better. It's about, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of planning better and having the ability to be calm and waiting till everything is done and then releasing the film. See, there are also financial implications of holding on the film. There is a cost attached to it. All of us are, most of the producers are independent producers and you know we are all bankrolling our films from our internal funds and, and pre-sales and, 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 and facilities with banks. You know? So it's, there's only a limited time up to which you can hold on to the film. So internationally studios don't have that problem because they have the funding, they have the, they have the whole funding system available to them. So we also are living in very different environments, unfortunately. I thought you'll share that Rishi Kapoor story. Uh -huh. What Rishi Kapoor story? Deepik, what he told Deepika Padukone. What? When she came to uh, dub uh, Ye Jawani Ya Diwani, you said, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know she had come, it was, he, had, he was going for some other film and she had come the day before the film and she said, what do you think I'm dubbing for my film? <laughs> it is crazy. So there are many instances, it's crazy. I mean, you, I mean, Bahubali also was so, like, the film was, I mean, uh, Rajwali sir was, was getting the film ready and I remember that, uh, you know, we had, it was releasing in two days and he said, sir, you don't have a copy. I don't know, how will this happen? He said, don't worry, it'll all come in time. But the good thing is they all manage, you know, but it is, it, it's, it's heart-wrenching. At that point, it's, it's, it's so tough because there are moments you're so, you're so anxious that will we make it, not make it? 
we've had issues like this also internationally the print has to go to some countries earlier because of censorship and then we send one copy there and then the other copy goes later in the other countries because it's still getting tuned better so it is it is it's a long way to go to achieve what you said so you just said you know there's a limited number of uh, talent in the industry and so many mm. directors and the time you spend like directors are chasing actors is that why a studio like you have uh, a studio like the one you had have uh, now a talent agency so a talent agency allows us to of course you're right i mean it's not a lot of it allows us to kind of uh, uh, you know it allows us to be uh, to to focus and build more stars and help them groom and grow so we have a larger pool of bigger and stronger actors you know who are able to do more work because like i said the top pool of actors is only 10 or 12 now you know and there are 60 film makers so it's such a lopsided industry it's very difficult to uh, uh, you know every month you do two three projects but beyond that you can't do more you know so there's only so much content that you can put out with the big stars you know because there's only so much that one 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 person can do in a day and in a year you know so the idea is to grow that ecosystem and build more stars so that everyone is able to build the business itself because there's more films that can be made and the entire business grows so yes that is an area we like to focus on and like i said we are also launching kalan has been launching so many stars we've launched around 8 or 9 actors so far and we would long to like to launch many many more going forward you know so they, you know there's a direct correlation in that sense you know we manage them and we we structure their growth pattern and their path so they make all the right decisions and hopefully be, become bigger actors over time is launching our own music label is something uh, which uh, you guys are considering you know we've thought of that but like i said you know all this makes sense if you have many songs and you're able to uh, you're able to monetize and distribute the product correctly i think there is a thought i mean we've thought about that but we not because it is also an independent business it needs a lot of planning it needs a i mean there are companies who are only doing this there are music labels like z music sony music you know tcs are doing this very very extensively and it's a whole business you know so it's not something you can just do so i mean yes the, it would be lovely if we could do that but it requires a lot of planning and it requires a large music bank of songs also you know so yes i mean we'll have to see how that pans out but yes it would be wonderful if we could do it apurva mehta thank you so much and all the best thank you so much thank you pleasure thank you bye bye